Hey everybody, it's Rory from ANS Gear, and today we're going to learn how to do some general maintenance on your paintball markers. Okay, so today we've got um, Rise and Rise Max. This is a proto gun from Dai. Uh, the guns, the Rise and the Rise Maxed, are almost identical to each other. They do come with three different features, which kind of sets them apart. This is a Rise, and this is a Rise Maxed right here. The Rise Maxed has the clamping feed neck on it. So the all uh, all metal clamping feed neck. It has the two piece barrel, which I don't have out here, but a two piece barrel rather than a one piece barrel. And then it has the airport on off ASA where this just has a normal screw in ASA. Uh, so other than those three things, the guns are the same. So breakdowns between the three would be the same between all of them. So we're gonna use the, um, the maxed here to take apart. And if, you have any issues with your gun, you can kind of just follow along and just go down the same path that we are going to go down. Um, all right, so taking it apart and uh, getting to the core or the, the guts of it. Um, if there are any differences between the two, I will point them out as we go along as far as disassembling, but there really is not. So first things first, let's get everything off that we're not working with. So we're going to take off the grips because it's going to make it easier to get to everything. So we will need to unplug some wires. This is actually a metric Allen key that I'm trying to unscrew this with. Let's grab an appropriate one. That's not it. Well, we might have to make do with with a metric one because I can't seem to find a standard one. Let's just see what this one looks like in here. No, nope, still wrong. That Allen key seems to be missing. Let's try this one. That'll work. Knew it was around here somewhere. Alright, so we're going to take off these three. We're going to flip it over. And we're going to take off these three. That's just going to get the rubber grips out of the way. Easier to work with the gun without them there. All right, so we can get this off. You can see there's no battery in this one right now. But I'm going to tell you one thing about the batteries in this particular gun. There is a note on the inside of your grips that say, put your battery in a certain way. If you don't, you'll ruin your gun. And it is actually very true. If you're putting your battery in, obviously you want to line up your terminals properly. So you've got your plus and your negative and the positive and the negative in the right spots. The first thing you need to do is put the front in. So the terminal side in first, push it forward, push it against the terminals, and then drop the battery down in. You can use this little red tab then to pull the battery out should you need to get it out. If you put the back in first and then you try to push down, you will ruin the gun, break the tabs off of the, the board. You can see the tabs are soldered onto the back side right here. They will snap off and then you will need to buy a brand new board. It's not a good idea for a gun that you just bought, so uh, be careful with that. Uh, when we're going to take off the ASA off the bottom, we're going to use the same Allen key that we used for our grip screws. I believe it's a 330 seconds, or yeah, 330 seconds. There's two holes in here. There is uh, this hole right here, which doesn't look like it has anything in it, and then there's this hole where you can see a screw right there. The hole that doesn't look like anything or anything's in it actually does have a set screw down at the bottom which you can get with this Allen key. So we're going to put the Allen key in. We're going to loosen this up just a couple turns. We do not need to take it all the way out to the point where this will slide on right here. So I can see that I'm sliding it back and forth. What I'm going to do is slide it off the front. It's going to make it easier to work with everything if I can take it off. All right. Now, dies macro fittings are notoriously hard to get the, uh, the line out of. So if, uh, by holding the collar down, you cannot pull this apart, and even I can't get them out a lot of the time. Like 
that one moved, but it didn't come all the way out. There it goes. Um, you can leave them on by doing it this way. You don't need to actually disconnect it from there. Uh, but I did take it off. Of there. So let's go ahead and get the frame off. Now to take the frame off, you're going to dis need to disconnect a couple sections of the wiring. You've got three ports on here. Three ports. You've got, it's going to be hard to do backwards, this one over here, right there. This one is your eye wires. The one that has four wires coming into it right there is your eye wire setup. You've got this one at the bottom, which actually runs back like this to a capacitor that sits right here. So you do not need to disconnect this lower bracket with two wires in it. So we need to disconnect the eye wire like that so we can get that out of the way. And then we need to disconnect the top one that comes into here. If you look closely at the bracket, you can see that it's actually blue inside there. So you, we do need to disconnect that one. That is the solenoid wire. So we're gonna get those wires up and out gently. And then I'm gonna grab a hold of it and I'm gonna gently take it out of there. I'm not putting any excess force on it. Just wanna move the wiring up and out of the way and uh, separate the frame. Like I said, you do not need to disconnect that lower one. Take our same Allen key that we've been using all along and take that one out. And if you notice, the screw that I'm pulling out right now is, let me move this back so you guys can see it, is slightly longer than the screws that we took out for our grips. There are only two of these longer ones and they are the two that will hold the frame on. They are the same thread pitch as the other ones for the grips, but they are used specifically for the frame. So don't get them mixed up. Don't accidentally try to take your short screws and put your frame together with them. All right, so we've got our two, uh, our two screws out. We're gonna slowly separate the frame, okay? Now you can see the wiring is all coming through here right now. So we want to move everything out of the way so that it can easily come up through the top. You can see that if I move this one, my eye wires are moving. If I move this one, you really probably can't see it, but that one is gonna run straight back to my solenoid. So I'm gonna slowly start to pull, and I'm gonna put my finger on these wires so that I'm not actually pulling this section of the wire. I'm kind of holding it with my finger and I'm really only moving this lower section. I need to pass these clips, these socket end connections, through the body or the frame, and I don't want them to get stuck or pinch because I don't want to pull. If you look inside there, you can see that the, the solenoid one is already coming out all the way, so that's good. We can move that one out of the way right there. And then we just want to make sure that this one makes it the rest of the way out. Easy peasy. When we go to put this back together, we want to remember how these went through. There's really only one hole that the wiring can run through, and it's going to be right down through here, going towards that red block, towards this block right here. This is our programming block. We want to run it through there. So we don't want to try to run it through the front here where the spring and everything is. It's going to come all through there and then plug in. So that's why you can see the wires kind of bunched together to feed through that one hole that's inside there. All right, so we've got that apart. So let's go ahead and take the regulator off. Now the regulator can be very tricky to get off of this gun because um, you, it's just narrow. And because it's so narrow, it's hard to get like a set of pliers on it just because there's not a lot of room in there all the time to get things to, to, to hold tightly. This one, this set of, uh, this adjustable wrench right here does have just enough, uh, it's thin just enough to get onto this top piece right here. Sometimes I've had to make tools in the past. I had to actually dremel this open wider so that it would fit over this piece. But this one does seem to work. Now, this reg comes apart kind of strange, or off the body, I should say. You see how it swivels around the top? 
So you can't just hook something onto this and turn it and have it come off because it won't. It'll just rotate around forever and ever and ever and will never come apart. We actually have to hold on to this part and separate the lower section of the regulator. Now if I move this out of the way, this is just a rubber cover that goes in this little spot right here. The regulator will split this part and this part of the lower section will come uh, apart from each other. So what I'm gonna do, hopefully, is I'm gonna put this on here and I'm gonna try to undo this regulator by hand. There we go. So now you can see that this is going to thread off. And it will come out of here. Now, our upper section of our regulator, which can still swivel around, you can get off. And now to do that, you're gonna put an Allen key up through the top right there. You can turn a light on, we can see that better inside there, possibly, maybe. No, light doesn't work. So we're gonna not turn the light on. Um, but you can actually see it, it's down inside of there. There's a little fitting, and I'll pull it out, and you'll be able to see it a little bit better. Let me make sure I've got the right Allen key for that. No, no, that one's too small. One's too small, one's too big. Just right. Let's see if I can actually get this out without having to use the wrench. Doesn't look like I can. It's really tight in there. There we go. So that's going to come out, and that will let me take this piece out. So this is the screw that goes through this and comes out the bottom like that, and then seals what's basically a vertical ASA, but it's a proprietary version, and lets this regulator marry up to it. There's an O-ring that sits right there, which keeps everything uh, from leaking, but there's also one that sits, there we go, see that there, underneath it. So let's see if I can get that out, right there. So this O-ring doesn't actually have a groove or a slot that it sits in, it just sits at the bottom, and you just kind of tap it down in there, and it's gonna sit against this face right here and seal up that area as well. So that's gonna just go in there and seal everything up, as well as this O-ring right there. So we can push that to the side. You have one O-ring that's right there, which is gonna seal this top and bottom half together. Take that off there. Woo! I lost it. Found it. There we go. Now we're gonna pull the rag apart. So inside the rag, we've got uh, some stuff that you're gonna see very similar to other regulators. You've got our piston. We're gonna have uh, some shims, and then we're gonna have our adjuster and our clip. So we're gonna remove the C-clip snap ring, whatever you want to call it. This one needs to go the other direction. These uh, C-clip pliers can be adjusted. In the position that it is right now, if I squeeze, it pulls apart. But if I undo this and flip it over, put it on the other side, when I squeeze, it comes together. So there's two different kinds of snap rings. This is a come together version. I can squeeze it and I can take it out. It's very handy to have a set like that. Uh, now we can take the reg adjuster out. One, two, three, four, five. Let's see if that came up far enough. Nope. Seven turns out. Pull that out. And then our piston, we can push out this way. You want to be very delicate with the face of that piston. We don't want to ruin it or mark it or scratch it or do anything bad to it. It's pretty well in there right now. Let me see if I can get it out this way. There we go. All right, so we don't want to lose any shims right here. And you can see that stack of shims right there. Now that's called well, that kind of stack is called a Belleville washer stack. And 
they use those because they actually work better than springs. They're more consistent and they're more precise. Uh, but there's a lot going on to them right here. So this stack, if I pull it off of here, is made up of a bunch of disks that look like this. And they are, um, depending on how you look at them, they're either concave or convex, it doesn't really matter. But they have, they're dome shaped, so they are not flat, okay? And if you stack them together like this, it will make a spring. So if I was to, I don't want to squeeze these without a post being through the middle of them. If I was to push on them like this, they will, um, they will compress and act as a spring. And depending on how many shims you had in there or the orientation of the shims would change the potential output pressure of the regulator. So you want to make sure that your shim stack, which this is referred to, is in the proper setup. And the manual shows how it needs to go, but this is how it needs to go. So one facing one way and then flip, flop, flip, flop, flip, flop all the way through until you get a shim stack that looks like this. If you don't put it together the right way, your output pressure will be wrong. It will actually be lower than it needs to be. So make sure your, your shim stack, your washer stack is appropriate. Now, as far as problems, leaks that you might see, um, this is just like any other reg. So if you have a leak coming out the bottom right here, check this O-ring that you see right there. If you have an, a problem with the O or the regulator not functioning properly, whether it is overcharging, not charging, slow recharge rates, uh, check the reg seat, which is this black seat right here. This is where the piston and the reg seat come together. Uh, this reg seat is replaceable. You do not need to replace the whole piston assembly. You can, if you look at the bottom down there, there's a little hole in the very bottom of the adjuster where you can take something very, very thin and small, small Allen key, something like this, and you can actually push it out and it will pop out. If it's brand new or it's never been flipped, you can actually take the seat and flip it over and you have a fresh side on the other side. If you've already flipped it once, then you would need to replace it with a new one. It is very possible with these regulators when you turn them down, so you're dropping velocity to overdo it. If you drop velocity, this is gonna come closer and closer and closer uh, to each other. If you close it down, so you've turned it all the way to where the piston and the reg seat are touching each other, and then you go further and you force the piston hard into the reg seat, you will put a hole in it and then it won't work at all. You'll be stuck basically with an unworking regulator that doesn't recharge or overcharges. So when you turn it down to go to zero, once you feel that resistance of the piston hitting the reg seat, stop. You don't need to go any further. Uh, if you get a leak from the hole on the side right there, it is because of this O-ring right here. So replace this O-ring and that should solve the leak that is on the side of the gun or the side of the regulator. Yeah, that's it. So I'm going to put this back together real quick so that we can um, move forward. Put a couple turns in. I'm going to push that through. There is actually another O-ring that I didn't tell you about because it's really hard to see in here and it's gonna be even harder to get to, but the, the piston uh, shaft, it runs through a hole to get to where the reg seat is and there's a little green O-ring that that runs through. So that would need to be replaced too if you do see a leak coming from the hole potentially on that. One or the other, either the big piston O-ring or the little green one that's on there. All right, so let's put... Woo. Can't put this together quite yet because we need to attach this to the body first. So we're just going to leave these separate. Can't put this on there. Probably put it the right way. And then put our snap ring back on. Okay. Make sure when you put a regulator back together that you always close it down before you try to gas it up. 
if you just put this in far, far enough so that it's threaded in and, and you then go gas it up, you could have this reg wide open so that you're overcharging everything. So just make sure that you have turned this in the down or closed position before you run any air through it. Let's set those over here. Let's go into this. Um, we'll look at this real quick too. We'll pull apart our airport. Sometimes you'll get a leak through the airport or it's not functioning properly. Um, this is where you need to fix. So inside there, you can see there's a core in there. This core has two little slots on the side of it. And if you have the die tool, there's a, a tool actually on the set that is meant for this. It's a little, looks like a little wrench with two little nubs on it. And you can stick them in there and you can turn it off. Or you can use any other piece of uh, pliers that have a needle nose or a sharp point on them. You put them down in there like that, and then you can unscrew the core out. Now the core typically won't come all the way out. You can't shake it out. You do need to kind of grab it and pull it out. So there's our core right there. That blue O-ring you might need to replace if you have a leak from your core. Or if you look down inside there, you might not be able to see it. There is a yellow O-ring down there. I'm trying to get the light in there. Um, let's see if our light is working yet. No, that's all right. We'll try to pull it out real quick so you can see it. It's a teeny tiny little O-ring. And it looks like that right there. You can easily pick it out. If you don't have a pick set, get one because it'll make life easy when you're doing gun work. This actually sits like this when everything is together. But don't assemble it like this. You want to assemble this with the pick um, or the o-ring in first and then put the assembly on top of it. Now when the assembly comes out, when this uh, core comes out, it's very very easy for this post to fall out. Now the post does need to go in a certain direction or orientation. On the post you have a rounded end like this end that you see right here and then you also have a flat end that you see right here. The flat end is the end that is going to push against the valve on your tank. So you want to make sure that the flat end comes out with the flat end of the core. The rounded end is what is going to ride on the cam that is inside here so that when you turn this and it pushes against this, it easily slides because of the rounded end and will go in and out. So make sure you put that together properly. So we're going to take our O-ring, we're going to put it back in. Now installing the O-ring in there I wouldn't recommend using a pick just because there is a little groove that it needs to sit in. There's like a little uh, recessed slot. It's very easy if you use an Allen key. Just push it down in there, go around in a circle, push, 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 making sure you're not uh, damaging it in any way. You don't want to use an Allen key that's broken or sh you know sharp or anything. You could also use uh, any kind of flat surface to push that down, a pen, whatever it needs to be, to seat that down in there. Then we're going to take our core, you can grab it, and then put it in, and push it into a spot, so I'm, I'm pushing it down so that it's uh, mating up with the threads, and then I can turn this and put it back together. Just go to where it bottoms out, don't need to go really any further than that. Uh, if you get a leak through that hole right there, check those couple options, uh, check the tank o-ring first, and then go through it and replace any kind of o-rings that you need to inside there. Pretty simple. All right, on to the gun. So we are going to um, pull really everything out of here, just so you guys can see how to do the work that you need to do. Um, one of these is gonna be slightly tricky, getting the eyes out can be a little difficult if we have the feed neck on, but I don't suppose you guys are going to pull your feed neck off to do this, so uh, this is how you would be doing it. So we'll do the uh, eye pipe first. You reach in there and grab the eye pipe, take it out, and take the bolt out. When you're doing the bolt, a lot of people over unscrew the bolt to get it out of there. I'm pretty sure you only need about one and a half turns to get it out. So let's test it. So from right here, 
That's one turn right there. Let's see if the bolt will come out. It will. So one turn is all I needed. You don't need to keep spinning, spinning, spinning to get the bolt assembly to come out. We'll talk about this in a second. Let's get the rest of the body disassembled. Uh, I'm going to separate my eye wire away from here. So I'm going to pull the solenoid off. There's three screws for the back, or for the solenoid. One at the back, one in the middle. and one at the front. Now as far as maintenance for the solenoid, there's really not much you can do to it. If you have an issue with your solenoid, get a replacement solenoid for it. Um, woo! Allen key dropped down. You're not going to be taking this piece apart and doing any kind of work to it. Uh, once you get these three undone, then you can take a flat or a Phillips screwdriver and the two that come through the top. And then we can pull our solenoid out. I'm going to take that one all the way out. There we go. Here's our solenoid assembly. Again, this is not something that you are going to be opening up and rebuilding. So if you have an issue with it, contact Dai, contact whoever you bought it from, and see, um, see what they can do for you. Our eyes are going to come up through the top. Now, this has a harness that they are seated inside of. I find it easier to take them out through the top. I've seen people try to smash them down through the bottom. I don't recommend that. Uh, but getting them in and getting them out can be tricky. So just be patient with what you're doing and you will eventually get them to pop out. I want to get these out so you guys can see what the actual harness assembly looks like. I'm having a hard time seeing down in there. There we go. And again, as I'm trying to grab these and pull them out, I'm being very gentle with them. I don't want to put any stress on them. I don't want to force them out. Um, you never want to just grab and pull. Just feed them through gently, gently, gently like a baby and everything will be fine. All right, so this is how the, the setup is on these. This plastic or the black that you see here is actually just a housing for the wires themselves. The wires are bent into place and forced up in there the eye itself is just a plastic square. Let's see if I can pop one of these down without doing too much to it. I don't want to un unseat it if I don't need to. push this eye out. Again, this isn't something that you would necessarily need to do, but if you were replacing them, you would need to do this. Or if you had to clean the eye itself out, then you would need to do this. So you can see that I've pushed it out and it's just a square eye. One side's a receiver, one side's the uh, emitter and they just fit up inside there. Super snug and super nice. Just like that. So when we put this back in, we're gonna feed the, the wiring down through, and then we're gonna squeeze this together a little bit, drop it down through, and then find its house, its home that sits in there. So inside the body, there's a square little cutout that this recesses down into and it fits nicely inside of it. So for the body, that's it. There's really nothing else left on here that you can take out. It's empty all the way through. There is uh, 
no little o-rings or anything left inside of here that you would need to worry about so the body is completely bare besides the feed neck at this point right here oh, it's a dirt uh, so we would be done with that so the bolt uh, the bolt's got a lot of o-rings obviously this style of bolt uh, a spool valve setup this one a lux bolt um, the geo bolt there's a lot of things going on in the bolt and there's a lot of potential problems so um, what I always tell people, if there's leaks in your bolt, or you've got a leak down the, the face of the gun coming out there, there are specific O-rings that you can replace, which can help uh, pinpoint or solve problems in specific leaks. But if you're having a leaking issue with your bolt, it is always a good idea to go in and just maintenance your bolt and replace your O-rings. Um, that way you're not trying to figure out which ones you have switched, which ones you haven't switched. Just switch them all and start fresh on all of them. Uh, if you've properly maintained your bolt, you're doing maintenance, you're doing cleaning, your O-ring should last you a long time. And then when you do have a problem, it's good to just switch them all out. If you don't do maintenance and you just assume your bolt's going to work, you're going to have problems and you're going to spend a lot of time troubleshooting individual O-rings when you should have just been taking care of it and then switch them all at the same time. So I'm going to break down the entire bolt. We'll look where all the O-rings that you would need to replace are, and then we'll reassemble it. So uh, this is going to break down into a couple different pieces. We've got our back right here. We've got two O-rings on the back side, uh, which um, can cause leaks through the frame on the back if these are bad right here. You've got a section up here that will separate and come apart. There is an O-ring on the inside here. You can see it down in there. It's a little blue one. Check that O-ring if you're getting leaking down the front. Uh, let's see. If you get leaks out of the very back of this, check the two O-rings on the back side right here. If you've got leaks coming out the front, check these O-rings on the top side. And that would be coming from potentially around the outside of the bolt. If you have leaks coming from the inside of the bolt, there is some O-rings that you want to check. You can check this O-ring that's right here. You can check this O-ring, this red orange one that's sitting on the inside here. You can check inside bolt leak again, can be caused by that blue one inside of there. Uh, so really there's a lot of potential change or differences, oh, so not even the right word, a lot of potential spots to cause individual leaks. And so, like I said, you're better off just going through replacing all your O-rings so that you know you're starting fresh uh, with O-rings and you're not just trying to um, find one O-ring that is the culprit. Once you become more familiar with your bolt and you understand the gas flow patterns and where everything is going, then yeah, go ahead and if I've got a leak out of here, I'm gonna replace this one and I'm gonna replace this one and I'm gonna be done and hopefully that should solve my problem. Um, that will come easier to you after you get a better handle on what's going on. But at the beginning or uh, just to save yourself the misery of trying to figure out what it is, just um, replace them all makes it super easy. It got, the bolt is not hard to maintenance. You can take it apart easily as you can see there. Um, it's it's not difficult. So I wouldn't, uh, especially if you put it together backwards, then it's really easy. Um, so it's nothing that you really need to stress out about, but you just need to do it. All right, so bolt back together. One thing I will tell you, when people unscrew the bolt and they take it out, typically, as you're taking this out with your Allen key, this will unscrew from the body right here, this main section or middle section of the body, and then you'll be able to pull it out. But what people will do is they'll look at it and they'll clean it and they'll do whatever, and then they'll realize, not realize that these two pieces are unscrewed from each other slightly. And they'll go ahead and they'll just put it back in. Now, when they go to tighten it back up, this might not tighten. It might when they screw this. The whole thing could rotate, all sorts of things. So. When you pull your bolt out, if you ever pull your bolt out, which you should, make sure before you put it back together that you screw everything together tight. Screw it down, screw it down, snug it up, and be done. Um, don't put your bolt together or put your bolt back in without making sure that it is properly together. Okay, uh, we're going to put everything back together now. 
So we'll start with the eyes because they kind of need to go in before we clutter everything up with the solenoid and the bolt and everything. So we're going to kind of follow that opposite uh, way that we did it. We know that these are going to lay like this. You can follow the, the way the wires are pre-bent when we pulled it out. So we know that it needs to drop in like this. Uh, so we're going to kind of feed everything through. Sometimes you might need to straighten a wire out or two so that you can fit it through certain sections. And we can see it come through the bottom there. Kind of just give it a little gentle nudge. Push that down with my finger. All right, so now comes the part where I'm going to try to line these up. And since you can't see in there, we don't have x-ray vision to see through the metal. You have to do a lot of this by just sight from the top and feel to get it where it needs to be. And once it's in there, you'll be able to feel that it is in its proper groove. Sometimes, like right now, one side is up, but one, so it's kind of like rotated over. So I'm just kind of trying to work it over to the side and get it in there so that it sits in there the way that it should. Like that. And the wires are coming out, and everything seems to be good at this point. We'll really know when we try to slide our eye pipe through because these sit on the outside of the eye pipe, and those eyes in the receiver that we talked about actually look through the eye pipe and look for the paintball. So if they're not completely recessed in, when the eye pipe tries to slide in, it'll actually run into them and it will not go in properly. So um, we'll know that when we get to the end and try to put it all together. So right now, I'm gonna take my solenoid and I'm gonna put this together. So you really can't get this backwards. You got two holes at the front and one hole at the back. We're gonna go in that pattern. What I'm gonna do though is I'm gonna take this and I'm going to connect, well, actually before that, before I even do that, I should show you guys something. Each one of these little um, turrets or banjo fittings has an O-ring on it. If you get a leak coming from these fittings, check to make sure that this O-ring that sits around this is there and that when you took it off, it didn't accidentally fall out of place and it's not working anymore or that it's not cracked or destroyed or just altogether falling apart. All right, so now back to this. I'm gonna take these and I'm gonna start them, but I'm not gonna bottom them out. I'm just gonna get them threaded in and uh, to the point where I know they're going down in. I don't wanna do them too far yet. So I've got each one in a little bit. Now I'm gonna take my Phillips section, and I'm gonna thread these in. If you do all the other ones first, sometimes it's hard to get these to line up properly. Or if you do these first, sometimes it's get hard to get these to line up properly. Um, so if we set these down just a little bit, so this is floating perfectly above it, we can then tighten all the other ones down after we put this block together. And now we can take these and put them in the rest of the way. I'm just being careful the whole time that we're not pinching anything. We didn't get these eye wires underneath the solenoid. They are free to move back and forth right here. This wire is not pushing on them uh, unduly in any way. And then we can just kind of put those together like that. They don't need to be pretty. Nobody's going to see them. You just don't want to get crushed by anything. From this point, we can take our bolt and we can put it back in. When we put our bolt in, we don't just jam it through there. There is threading that you can see right here that this needs to thread into. So these O-rings are going to have to pass through that threading. And if you just smash it through there, it's very easy to cut these O-rings as you go through the threaded section. So we're going to push it against the threaded section and we're just going to wiggle back and forth and it's gonna make it easy to get by there. Once we pass that threaded section, we can kind of turn and push. 
We always want to rotate the bolt if we're turning in the direction that would be tightening the pieces together, never backwards or counterclockwise. So we're going to push and turn, push and turn, get through that threaded section, push, push, and turn. We're going to tighten this down, one turn, little snug. That's all we need to do, little, little bit. Once that body's together, we can take our eye pipe and we can push it in and we can make sure that our eyes are in the right spot. If we look down inside there, you can see that the eye pipe, that's the backside that you can see moving right there, that the backside is all the way clear and that the breech is open so that a ball can easily drop down inside of there. Now you can see the tip of the bolt is sticking out a little bit at the front. That is okay. That's the way this body sits or this bolt sits with the tiniest amount of the bolt sticking forward and in the way. It, the bowl will easily still clear that and drop down inside. And again, you can see the eye pipe slides all the way back and makes an easy entrance into the breech. If it is sitting like this or like this or something blocking it, something isn't right, either the eye the harness is not in the right spot or you don't have the eye pipe lined up properly to slide back in there. All right. So the frame, let's get the frame back on. So we're gonna do this, push the frame in, uh, but what we want to do or be careful of is the wires. We don't wanna damage the wires. We don't want them to be crimped or crushed in any way. So it is a, a delicate process. Uh, I guess we're not really delicate, but just be aware of what you're doing. So I always kind of get my, my sockets together and then I'm gonna to try to feed them through, but they need to come up out of here. So I, I, it doesn't, you don't have to put this together perfectly in plane with each other. You can turn this so that you can kind of pop them up through like that and then rotate this back over so that it is in plane with everything else. But first I want to grab that one, get it out. I want to grab this one with my pick and get it up and out as well so that I can push forward and line everything up. Again, I am as I'm sliding these together, I'm being very aware of where my wires are. My eye wires are right here. My other wires are coming out. I do not want to um, crush these eye wires. And it is possible for your eye wire to be sticking out on the side of your body like this. And then you go ahead and try to put your frame together and you're gonna crush these wires and then you're gonna have a problem. Your eyes aren't gonna work anymore. So you can always take your eye wire harness and pull on it a little bit to get those wires to tuck in or take a pick, obviously not the sharp end, I've got this bent side and I'm gonna push my wiring in so that it is out of the way. And then I can go ahead and push this together. If you can't push your frame together without it bulging off, then there's something in the way that is uh, causing it not to seat properly and that would most likely be the wiring. So be careful of that. We're gonna take our two long screws. Remember we talked about the long ones, not the short ones. Those are for our frame. We're gonna connect our frame back up. All right, so let's tighten that down. Again, snug, not over tight. And then we can take our wiring and we can reconnect it. As we can see, they mark this plug right here. Actually, if I turn it this way, that one's got a blue mark on it. It's white, but they've taken a blue marker and they've colored all over it to make it blue. That one goes into the blue port. Pretty straightforward. And the reason they do that is because the port below it is the same size. So it's a two prong port. They don't want you accidentally putting the solenoid wire into the capacitor port and vice versa, the gun won't work. This one you can't get wrong because it's a four pin port. It goes into the four pin slot and push it together. Tuck our wiring around so that it is not sticking out. And then we could go ahead and put the grips back on. But first we want to put our ASA and our regulator back together. So uh, upside down so that the pin or the screw sits out the bottom. We're going to drop it in. We want to make sure that that O-ring is sitting down there and that O-ring is where it should be. Let's push that together and then let's tighten this down. 
Now we can tighten that there. And that's going to still give us the option to rotate through. Now we can take this and we can thread it all the way on. Perfect. We don't need to over crank this. We just need to get it to the point where it's snug and seats up against there. And that's fine. All right. So ASA is going to go on. I'm going to connect this first and then slide it on because it makes it easier to do than sliding this on and then trying to push the, the hose through there. But one thing I want to show you guys is the frame actually comes in or the mount is two separate pieces. The piece that we undid earlier with this screw or the piece that we loosened up is what you see right here. Okay, that's this screw. This screw comes through the bottom and pushes down against the ASA. That's what keeps the ASA from sliding forward and back. That screw that we touch does not keep the piece from being loose. That is controlled by these two screws right here. Now, I see all the time people bring their guns in where the bottom section is just loose like this. And they are monkeying around with this screw from the top right here and they can't figure out why it won't be tight. These two screws hold the, the dovetail plate or rail in place. The other screw holds the ASA in place. So if your ASA is loose, it's because of these two screws not because of the one that you can get to from the top. So let's tighten those back down. I loosened them up just to show you guys. So those ones you can kind of put a little extra tight into so that that doesn't come apart. Reconnect our ASA. And then because this swivels, we can move it out of the way, line it up, and then slide it back. Put it where you want it, you want it here, you want it here, wherever you want it to be. I like them right at the end. And then use our Allen key to tighten that one screw up that we, um, that we loosened up. Now, the less you unscrewed it when we started, the quicker it will be to um, tighten it back up. If you turn this a ton of times, more than you needed to, then you're going to be sitting here turning this thing all day long until you uh, get it tight. And the tricky part is, is finding the slot or the socket. Because you can't see it, you just have to do it by feel. So you can find where the Allen key drops in and then turn it over to tighten it up. So that one, if you have never done this before, this can take more time than you really want to put into it. that one down then we put our battery back in and that's it put our, our uh, grips back on here so this breakdown like I said will be the same for the standard rise they internally are the same they just come with some different cosmetic external features which kind of sets them apart from each other. So I'm going to just put these three on this side in. That way you guys aren't just staring at me putting screws into grips. I know that's entertaining, but I guess it could be very boring also. All right. So there you have it. Protorize and Protorize Maxed. Well guys, I hope this helps you out with any questions or concerns you have about your paintball gear or products. And as always, for all your paintball needs, shop ansgear.com.